Welcome to this afternoon session. Um, Jeremy Nelson from the Sanford Libraries will be talking to us regarding his work on the machine learning process and the approach that the software development team has done on classifying Synopia's RDF. So go ahead, take it from here, Jeremy. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, so my name is Jeremy Nelson. I'm a software engineer and for university libraries. I've been involved with Synopia since it's really its inception as we create the, the link data at editor environment. So I posted both uh, on the chat here within Zoom as well as on the, the Slack channel, a link to this uh, presentation, which is actually a website. So I'm gonna first start off, start off with a little bit of a background. Uh, the link data for production is a multi-year, multi-grant uh, process or uh, project by the, that was funded by the Mellon Foundation. And Synopia was a deliverable of the last grant that we're continuing work on now. And it is a, uh, a cloud-based link data editor. And it was, a, it was the primary product of this last grant. And part of what we're doing in the next grant is figuring out how to, to sort of close the loop and connect external parties with the, the Synopia editing environment. Uh, what, uh, also just to give you a quick link, um, I'll be talking about a couple of technologies, machine learning technologies, primarily PyTorch and FastAI. So uh, originally I was using TensorFlow, but after taking a great uh, online course that I, would have, that I would suggest if you have any interest in this topic, uh, I have a link there on FastAI, and so I sort of adopted some of those technologies for this work here. So the, what we're talking about here in a particular sense is a, a challenge in Synopia, uh, Synopia's user, user interface and current work. Now, uh, what happens, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll give you a demo in a little bit, is that uh, we have a, a close relationship with the questioning authority uh, lookup service at Cornell and the University of Iowa. And this basically allows users to search selected resources or authorities, particularly with uh, share VE RDF. And then there's an opportunity for them to sort of clone it into Synopia to actually start using that, that description as a base to create a new description off, off that. Now, part of this process and there's a video here. If you go here, you can see this, but I'll show this live. So here, and I'm in Synopia now, and if I'm gonna select Stanford, and let's see, I'm gonna do a search here. So I'm searching Stanford Share VDE RDF collection. And so here we see uh, a number of results, five results, and you'll notice over here on the right, there's this copy button. So when you click the copy button, you're popped up with this modal that requires you to sort of select a resource template. Now, the, this is sort of complicated because if the cataloger, if you're not familiar with which, uh, what are the, all the available resource templates, uh, then it's hard to try to guess what, what, what you want to select. Now, um, we also have another option to load RDF, which requires sort of the same idea is that you can manually paste in RDF and then you are also prompted to sort of select a resource template to match. Now, uh, some of the other uh, presentations of the day, particularly Ben's, talked about these resource templates. And so I'll give you a, a quick overview of a, of a resource template. Now, uh, the resource templates really, be, uh, really are based on the Library of Congress's bid frame editor and profile editor. And Snowbee uses these profiles that are created in JSON as a sort of a domain specific language to sort of uh, uh, provide a context and allow Snopia to sort of generate the user interface. So I have an example here for an abbreviated title uh, resource template. Here you can see the ID, we have the properties which are basically predicates that are used to assign for your RDF triples. And then this particular resource produces a uh, user interface here within Synopia. And there's an example of a, of a screenshot for that. So the challenge is really, how can we sort of eliminate that step? Or how can we make this cataloging step much easier? So instead of requiring 
catalogers to know all the available resource templates within Sanofia and have them have to make that determination of which is the best resource template to sort of match that incoming RDF. What I'm, we're looking, what I'm looking at doing here is actually using machine learning and particularly a, a, a type of neural net to uh, create a classifier that will predict uh, based on an incoming RDF what, what is the best match for the resource template. And so it would sort of eliminate that pop-up modal that you just saw within the editor. Now, there is a, there is a uh, stepping stone to, to getting our data to actually to be able to start using uh, this fast AI and PyTorch library. And it starts with a, a really popular open source uh, technology called Panda. And in Panda, it allows you to create basically a steroid or a, uh, uh, a spreadsheet on steroids, if you will, in that it allows you to manipulate and store sort of tabular data that you would typically see in a, res in a uh, spreadsheet and then be able to manipulate it and feed it into uh, a model to be able to train and then validate on. And in this project or this particular research, uh, I'm, what I'm doing to create the Panda is I'm not actually using the full uh, subject predicate object in the triple. I'm just taking the subject and the predicates. And, and then I'm creating a basically a, a sparse matrix that assigns sort of a frequency of how many times does that predicate appear in a particular resource. And I'm also including a couple of other uh, fields or columns within this, including sort of the group where, where the resource template came from, as well as what resource template. Now, I should say that the, the training data and the validation data, I'm actually using the export from both Sanopia's production and stage environments. So from now, I'm actually going to switch to using a uh, CoLab notebook, which is basically a, a Jupyter notebook that's running all this software. So I'm going to switch over here. There's a link here if you, you can actually run this on your own if you want to. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load this up and make sure. Okay, good. So while I'm sort of talking, I'm going to really quickly uh, run a couple of things. And then, so first thing is uh, to set up in, a, in this notebook, we are, uh, I'm going to clone a, a source code repository that has a couple of, of uh, machine learning or fast AI helper classes to help us sort of go from a RDF graph to a, a pandas uh, data frame. And then from that pandas data frame, we're going to convert it into a, uh, uh, what's called a, a fast AI data bunch that we'll then train our model on. So the first thing I'm doing here, I'm not going to run all of these, but I'm cloning, base, cloning the, the source code repository. Then I'm downloading the latest uh, production and stage uh, uh, exports from, from, from Snopia, and there's a link there to both of those. Then I'm installing a couple supporting uh, Python modules to be able to read in that JSON LD that's being exported, convert it into an RDF graph in, in, in this JSON format. Now, finally, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm importing a particular type of neural net framework from past AI called a tabular. So this is basically a way to use tabular data or spreadsheet, data that's constructed as a spreadsheet, and be able to train your, your neural nets on. And here I have a little bit of help there. And so then as we sort of go through, now um, here's an example of, I, I, in, in, the, in, this, in the RDF classify repository, there are a couple of helper modules. One is called a data loader, and the other is a, a data prep. Now here, uh, the data loader will allow us basically to take that zip file, extract all the, the uh, exported RDF for all the entities that have been created in either the Sanofia production or staging environment. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll take that and convert it into a pandas data frame. So here is an example of a 
uh, for production. So I'm grabbing that production zip. And let me just run that. And there we go. And while that's sort of running in real time here, I'm going to make our lives a little bit easier. So it's so basically it's going through the all all the zip files, and if it can't convert it into an RDF, it it presents an error message. Now in our export for all the different cohort members, you can see all the different institutions like Yale, University of Chicago, uh, University of Washington, the National Library of Medicine, Princeton, Stanford. We're all, all are, have their specific groupings within Snopia. So the, the intention there is that users would be able to, or catalogers would be able to save resources that are more specific to their institutions. Now, um, in stage, so just a, a, a quick difference. So stage in Snopia is really sort of the experimental environment that we have, where catalogers can, they don't have to worry about what they create will be actually production worthy. And so what's happened over time, since we had our stage environment available sooner and people have been working and still are working quite a bit to do this experimenting, our stage environment is about twice as large as our production environment. Now, the, the flip side of that is because uh, the stage environment is sort of more experimental or free form, the, all the sort of resource templates that match particular resources uh, may not be what uh, would be considered a well-formed bib frame, or they could be something totally different. And so it's, again, it's, it's not, uh, it's very much of an experimental environment. Well, on the other hand, production is really about uh, grabbing and um, creating production level source of truth for these different institutions who want to actually create a bib frame or other RDF uh, that, is, that is production worthy and is intended to be the source of truth. So here, um, just to give you a sense, um, in production right now, as of last Sunday, when we did our weekly export, we had 274 uh, entities or resources that were created in production. And then in stage, we have about 4,338. So I'll, I'll get, show you an example of one of these in, in sort of turtle format. So here's an example that I'm grabbing from the, that production zip file, converting it into, into the RDF graph and now displaying it in turtle. And so this is a sort of a very simple uh, description of the, the actual RDF that was produced here. So now that we have the, this basically what comes back when we run <clears throat> the production uh, uh, to, uh, to extracting the JSON into this list of graphs is that we're now we're going to create this Panda data frame. Now this takes a little bit of time. And so since um, I, I don't want to waste our time watching this happen, part of what happened, what we're doing here, and I'll sort of explain, I'm going to bring up some actually source code here is we're going through, we're basically sending a list of these, of these graphs that were extracted. We're also sending in uh, the URL to where all the resource templates are currently in, in whatever environment you're working on. So I'm, I'm creating here uh, in, in production and looking at the source code, they, what we're doing is sort of in real time going out, downloading all these, these JSONs, uh, JSON resource templates extracting all the property templates from them to, cur to create this, uh, the column or classes that we want to use to classify all the RDF within, within Synopia, in, in this case, the production, uh, uh, the production environment. Now, um, so because we're sort of going out there and, and ex calling and extracting all these in sort of real time, it's, it, it'll, it takes about three or four minutes. Um, in the meantime, um, I want to, so I'm actually going to go back here to kind of show you. So this is what we're sort of creating here to give you a sense of, of, of what this data frame looks like. 
So we have the actual URL of the subject. So this is what has been saved as an entity and is, and is dereferenceable in, in the Sanofi environment. We, after we're going and downloading all the resource templates, we save as in, in, as another, in another column or class what resource template was used to create that. And then we're also saving it in a third column, the group. And then the rest of the columns, what we're doing is, we're, again, we're creating this sort of frequency. So uh, for the most part, uh, it's, it's sort of sparse in that not all the resources are going to have all the proper, all the total properties that are available within, within Synopia. So this, the actual properties that exist, uh, we create a frequency and then uh, if there's more of them, we increase that frequency. So we're creating this sort of sparse matrix. And well, the reason I, I sort of took this approach was that uh, it, it sort of simplifies uh, our, our input data. And one, one key, uh, key consideration when doing machine learning in particular is that it's really important in how you structure your data. Um, I did some more experiments, experimentation with actually using a full triple and then assigning that all the triples that are associated with the resource template. And that wasn't as, as efficient as doing the sort of frequency count in, in creating this data form. So this is still chunking along. Um, while that's going, what we will do once that's finished is um, we, we will convert it into this uh, tabular data branch. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so here it's going through all the, the resource graphs that we have in there and it's converting it into this data frame. And here, so we just finished. Now to, now to actually see in sort of real time, here is the subject, the resource template, the group. And as you can see, for the most part, these are all the total number of predicates that are within the Synopia production environment. And as you can see, most of these have been assigned as a, a, a value of zero. But other ones, um, when they actually are part of that, we will see a, a one or two, depending on how frequent that particular uh, triple is within the, the, that particular entity or resource. So now I'm going to, next I'm going to take this data bunch and, or this, this uh, data frame, and then we're going to convert it into a fast AI data bunch. And that's what, and then the data bunch <coughs> will actually, uh, here's sort of the prep, is we, we do some sort of pre-processing just to make it easier to use. Uh, so we go, basically what we assign, we say our dependent variable, what we're trying to guess is this resource template. So that's what we, we assign. <coughs> we assign category names. So these are ones that we have the actual text and then all the predicates are, are saved as a continuous. And then we create a test and a validation set. And then we return this as this data bunch. So here, <coughs> excuse me, it's created the data bunch. And now we can send this data bunch into the actual, our neural net uh, learner or tabular learner. So here I'm gonna do this. And I've also in this uh, Jupyter notebook here, have links to all the, the places in the fast AI documentation for all these different steps. So here, what we're doing now is we're running and, and we're trying to determine what is sort of the optimal learning rate that each of the layers within the neural net can use. And he, what you basically want to do is uh, select the, the, the steepest part of this graph to send in as your, as your uh, learning rate. Now, the next thing uh, we're going to call on this, so we create this production learner. We run it through, we display this learning graph. Now we're going to actually run and start training our model. We're only going to train it three times or three epochs. epochs. And then we are, uh, the second parameter, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, the actual learning rate. And so it's about right here, about where the, the steepest part of that graph is. And now we're just going to learn, run that. So one, so that you can define different metric you, metrics you want to optimize for. And I, I, I selected the accuracy. So this is based on the training data and we have our test data. 
it uses that to determine how accurate our, our neural net or our learning model is. And you can see here we are, we go from 73 to almost 80% and then drop back down. So each time it goes through the net, trains it, and then, and then passes that, the results of going through that epic back through again. So this is about just right now without hardly doing any, excuse me, doing um, any real optimization, we're now at in production about 77% accurate. So that's actually pretty good. There are some things that I'll, I'll talk about in the next steps that will try to improve that accuracy over time. But right now, um, over 75% of the time, if we use this model, we'll be able to predict sort of a, an incoming RDF and what would be the best existing resource template in that environment to, to see. So, um, <clears throat> the, and then again, that accuracy metric is just about, in our case, uh, predicting the, what the best resource template should be for that. So now um, we're actually gonna run a, a prediction. So within here, I created this, this function called QA to DF. So we're gonna use the exact same uh, questioning of, uh, authority lookup to the, that we have in Synopia. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna send in what we found here in our search, well, the search cleared, but we're going to send that in. Um, we're sending you notice I'm using the Stanford uh, sub authority here. And so I'm going to first create the, the function and then um, I'm going to call that function and send in sort of the column. So this is basically going to go through, grab that share VDE resource that you see right here, this link here that's in, that's in QA. And then we're going to create a very small, basically one row or one series that represents uh, this Milo Angelo, I, I know how a cage bird sings book. So I'm going to run that right now. And then just to see, so the, again, because this is a, a, a data, um, uh, here we go. We can, we can see this is this data frame. Now, moment of truth is we're gonna send this uh, matrix that we've converted from this RDF into this Panda data frame. And we are going to predict or try to figure out what is the best match in the existing. Now, um, if we go back here, this might be useful. Just to see this. So while that's doing, so I, I grabbed the, the, the first uh, entity here, and you'll notice that it has been assigned. So uh, Castellini gave this, this work to two RDF classes, a super work and a bib framework. Now, when we ran it against our production model, it, it came back with the, uh, this category tensor of 75. So uh, part of what you're doing, one of the, the challenges in doing machine learning is no matter what sort of field or, or area you're looking at doing, you need to convert it into a format that is understandable by the neural net. And that is uh, a, a really just these large matrices that are made up of integers or, or float values. Now, uh, what does- uh, Jeremy, I apologize to interrupt. Do you we uh, may run out of time for you okay. to show the last few steps. Uh, there are actually quite a few questions for you and uh, we may have to skip the questions. So, okay, okay, sorry. So I just ran it really quickly, grabbed the 75 and this actually said that this work was a super work from Yale, that met the best match. So um, very quickly, sorry uh, about that. Um, I'll, I'll take a look and see. Uh, why did I switch using PyTorch? Uh, I found TensorFlow required a lot more lower level manipulation and FastAI and PyTorch is actually easier to use and, and to actually get starting creating models. 